competition. Brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's commitment to youth sports continues. Hi, everybody. I'm Gordon Maddox. And you know, in gymnastics competition, gymnasts always work all of the events. Men compete against men. Women compete against women. Well, in mixed pairs competition, it's a little different. Of the 14 countries that are here, the men and women representing those countries have paired themselves off into mixed pairs. They each get to compete in three events maximum. Now, here's the way it works. Well, it seems a little more complicated than it really is. First of all, each country gets to decide who is on its own male-female pair team. All the gymnasts from each country compete in the first round, and then after the first round, only the top 10 couples advance to the second round. After the second round, only the top five scoring teams advance to the third and final event. And of course, the winner is the pair with the highest number of judges' points at the end of all three rounds of competition. Working with me, an old colleague, a former Olympian, now head coach at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque, Rusty Mitchell. And Rusty, first of all, your impression of mixed pairs competition. Gordy, it's going to be a fun meet. We've got gymnasts from all over the world that are just outstanding athletes. I think that the uh, gymnasts that are the most consistent will uh, end up winning. Uh, we definitely have some favorites, uh, Li Ning uh, from China with his young lady, and of course, Mary Lou Retton and T Tim Daggett. Uh, we've got some sleepers in there too, uh, Dan Hayden and Marie Roethlisberger. Well, now tell me, Rusty, do you think that uh, strategy is gonna play a very important part in the final selection of the winner in this competition? I think it could, uh, depending on uh, how Tim Daggett uh, reacts after a competition. He's been out of competition for uh, quite a while, and. Uh, if Lee Ning's shoulder holds up, uh, and if he picks the right events, uh, he could very well uh, beat Timmy and uh, uh, Mary Lou. Well, we'll go away for a few commercial words. When we come back, it's the McDonald's International Mixed Pairs Competition. Don't go away. July, ESPN renews America's love affair with the 1984 Summer Olympic Games. For 16 consecutive days, we'll bring you all the excitement, the thrills, the heroes who made headlines in Los Angeles. You'll see Mary Lou Retton, Edwin Moses, Greg Luganis, and many others. Gymnastics, track and field, boxing, swimming and diving, and much more when ESPN presents The Olympics Revisited, coming in July. Hi, everybody. I'm Gordon Maddox, along with Rusty Mitchell, back at the Rosemont Horizon for the Mixed Pairs Championship in Rosemont, Illinois. This is Daniela Silvas from Romania. She does a real nice reverse heck. Cast off goes right into a cross arm to a straddle front. Glide kip. You know, they have to have 10 elements on this event. It's just like working high bar on the high on the low bar and the high bar. You have to have kips, swings, pirouettes. And she comes up with the giant swing into her dismount. Well, a nice landing for Daniela Silivas from Romania. We're in the first round of competition. She has to be happy with that performance. Of course, her partner is yet to come. And remember, only the top 10 from the first round advance to the second round of competition. We're looking in replay of her giant swing to her reverse heck. There's nice straight legs. Good cast to a handstand, which is a requirement. Here's her cross arm, straddle front. Very well executed. Well, now here comes Daniela's mixed pair partner. Now, this really is a mixed pair since Romania didn't send any men to the competition. They've taken the Romanian women and matched them up with teams that didn't send any women. This happens to be Loren Barbieri from France. He's 24 years old, five foot seven, from Montco, France. He's getting ready for his mount, which is a full in. His round off back handspring, stands up very good and does a full in back out, very well executed. Second pass, he has three tumbling runs. Here's a pike double back, turn to the splits, showing a little flexibility, not a requirement, but it does show that uh, the gymnasts are very, very limber. Oh, nice press. It's a planned press to a handstand. The French men have really come up, haven't they, Rusty? They really have. Their whole team is getting better and better. Here's a full twist to a front head spring step out. One of the other requirements a gymnast has to have is a balance move, either on one leg or one arm. And you can see 
Loren is doing a nice scale. Getting ready for his dismount. Steps back into the corner to give himself a little bit more room. And a double back somersault. Well, that's Loren Barbieri from France. He's a really clean set, Gordy. A truly mixed pair. Now, there they are with their teammate. Look how small Silivas looks. They say she's 14 years old and can you believe this? 61 pounds? She's really tiny. You know, she is also the junior national champion from Europe. There we see uh, Barbieri coming in with his uh, full in back out for his mount. Very well executed. Nice and tight in the in the tuck, a little loose on his feet for him. Now remember the combined score of each of the members of the team is the score that we're looking for. Score of Daniela Silivas, there it is, 9.45 for the little Romanian woman. Now the score for Lorraine Barbieri from France will be coming up momentarily. His score a 9.5. The next pair we'll be watching for is from Japan, the woman Miho Shinoda. 12 years old, four foot nine, 73 pounds. Now in international competition, the gymnast must reach their 15th birthday the year of the Olympics of the World Championships. For a fun competition like this mixed pairs championship, uh, the age is not that important. But 12 years old, that's that's pretty young to be traveling the world and, and going after this kind of championship. Rusty? Well, Miho's getting ready for a first vault. And in competition two, the gymnasts are allowed to take uh, two runs down to the horse. There's a layout, stretch Sukahara. Now, Sukahara is sort of a cue here. Watch the man who adjusts the board for her. He'll be smiling, probably. That is Mr. Sukahara. Go ahead, Rusty. Well, he's just one of the finest coaches in the world and uh, was a great gymnast. You see Miho do her layout, Suk, and she's just a little loose on the landing. And Sukahara was also the uh, Olympic coach for the past uh, 84 Olympics for the women's team. There he is. That's Sukahara. He's won uh, two gold medals in 1972 in Munich, another couple of gold medals in Montreal. But what a legend he has been. All right, here comes uh, Miho Shinoda's second vault. Now, remember, the women get two vaults, only the better of the two counts. The men, of course, will be taking only one vault. Well, Miho gets ready for her second vault. And, you know, the run is not judged, but it's very important. If they run slowly down to the horse, they're not going to go over it and get enough distance. So your judges are looking for a very fast run, hit the board, and a very quick block off, off the horse and stay tight in the air. That was a much better ball. Really an aggressive run, would you say? Good fast run and uh, very tight off the horse and uh, in the air with a very strong landing standing almost straight up. And uh, Smiley Sukahara loves it. Oh, looking at her pre-flight. Might watch the legs. They're a little loose coming on. And then very tight the rest of the way through the vault. Very good landing. Well, here comes her partner, a real veteran, Koji Sutomoro. 27 years old, 5 foot 4, 126 pounds, from Osaka, Japan. A real veteran now. Been on, uh, I think, two Olympic teams. He well, is very good on this event. The uh, new requirements of showing three strength parts is very difficult. He has one here, and then he has a D move where he presses to the handstand straight body. He must swing to a handstand to meet one of the requirements. He went through the handstand and did not hold it, but there's no deduction. There's another strength. Nice kip L. There's a press to a handstand, which is also a strength move. And he still has to achieve that handstand through swing, which he does right here. And with another a good D uh, dismount, say as a layout double back, he would score very good. It's a little bit weak on the landing, very, very good exercise. Yeah, I think so. A real competitive exercise. More or less about the same kind of performance he was showing us in, in uh, Los Angeles. Okay, Rusty? Well, here we see his dismount again where he comes up. Giant back over the top. Very tight body. Rings out in front. And then the layout double back. He just bends his knees a little bit coming in to the landing. One. All right, here come the scores now very shortly. First of all, we'll see the score probably for Miho Shinoda. Should be coming momentarily. 
Well, Shinoda score is a 9.6. Combine that now with Koji Sotomura. He scored a 9.45 for a total of 19.05. We'll be back right after this and our first look at America's own Mary Lou Retton. Mary Lou Retton in the event that probably got her more notoriety than any other from the 1984 Olympic Games, vaulting, where she scored a 10 that pretty well sewed up her all-around gold medal. Gordy, she hasn't even performed yet, and she has the crowd eating out of her hands. Well, you know, there are over 14,000 enthusiastic people here that are really into a competition they don't know much about. Well, you see that number. It's not the score she wants. It's a 3-6-1, which is the, the score on the scorecard for the full twisting Sukahara, which uh, Mary Lou is going to do right now. Now, the judges can score only the vault that she flashed on that number. Any other vault would count as zero. That's correct. You can see that Mary Lou runs very, very hard and fast. She hits the board and does full twisting Sukahara and just nails it. Oh, yeah. She is absolutely the most dynamic female gymnast I have ever seen work. We'll talk about what Olga Corbett did for the sport. She never had the kind of charisma that you see right here. We can see Mary Lou. Let's look at the uh, execution in the air. It's almost perfect. Very, very good landing. Uh, a slight little step. Uh, it has to be a very good score. Well, Rusty, she's got another chance to improve on it. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, if anybody can do it, I'm sure Mary Lou can. She's a, an excellent vaulter, and she just uh, is on top of uh, her gymnastics right now. You know, and there's something else, too. R she just exudes the philosophy and the attitude that she can do better, too. She, she just never seems to crack under pressure. Uh, every time I've seen her, she seems to arise to the occasion, and... Uh, I'm sure she probably will here. Here it comes. Full twisting Sukahara, and it was better. Boy, just exactly like the uh, vault she threw in the Olympic Games. We've got a 10 on that. I wonder what the judges are going to do with her here. I'll tell you what, Gordy, if that's not a 10, uh, I'd really be surprised. Let's look at the execution. She comes off the horse with a very strong block, practically perfect in the air, and right on the landing. Boy, what an what a ankle burner that must be. That's absolutely beautiful. I, I just love to watch this woman ball. Now, unfortunately, we have to wait until Timmy Daggett performs to find out what the judges feel about that score. Well, I'm kind of disappointed about that. I'd like to see the score now, but here comes Timmy. He's getting ready to start on uh, his next event. Well, Tim has elected to begin on what I think is his strongest event, the pommel horse. Now, watch the way this man attacks the horse. He's just unbelievable. He does exude power when he works the pommel horse. He mounts uh, pretty conservatively, but uh, is just uh, on top of it all the time. He met one of the requirements of the one pommel uh, element there. He did his scissor moves. And then he comes into the last half of his exercise where he goes down to the end, and then he starts flaring across the horse all the way to the other end, hops to the middle, and does a stockley down and goes right near a handstand. Very, Unbelievable. very nice. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And he'll do that about 10 out of 10 times. Timmy Dagger, student at UCLA, now working in his final year. Marvelous gymnast. He really is. And not only that, <laughs> he's really happy with that routine. Well, we look at Timmy's last half of his exercise where he hops back into the middle through the flare. He does a stockley. Well, he usually bends the one leg, and it was perfectly straight. That was a good routine. Oh, an outstanding routine. You might find that the men's scores are a little bit low since they're working under a new scoring system now, trying to avoid all of the tens that we've almost become accustomed to. Well, you know, Waiting. they've had an addition of the, uh, besides the A, B, and C elements, they've added a D value now. And for the gymnast to get courage, they have to have a D skill in their routine. Well, let, well there's the score for Mary Lou Retton, a 9.9. .9. Timmy Daggett on the horse receives a 9.55, so their total is 19.45 in the first round. Boo, why? I would have given that a 10. Yeah, why not a 10, Rusty? I tell you, Gordy, I, I don't understand. I, judges must be sitting in a different place than I said, but that was a great ball. Well, here comes another part of the American contingency. Marie Roethlisberger, first alternate on the 84 Olympic team. Uh, she's starting very nice. She does a beautiful stalder half-turn pirouette to a reverse heck. A little loose on the toes, but very, very nice ex execution. Good stall there on the low bar. Shoot through up to the high bar. Cast up. There's her giant swing. 
very tight body. Most gymnasts are too loose. Here's a great double back. Well, for her, that is a great exercise. She's just been riddled with injuries the last couple of years. She has a heart as big as this arena. She's really been a, a phenomenal performer. Well, she nailed the set, and she's going to get a good score for it. Mary Lou's partner, Dan Hayden, grew up in upstate New York, then trained in Tucson, Arizona, and is now a freshman at Arizona State University. Here comes Dan on the rings. And watch this man. He is a real comer. Dan has had to change all his routines. He's upgraded his difficulty because of the new rules. And one of the things he's added in rings is uh, an inverted cross. It still isn't perfect yet, but he's going to score very well. The thing that Dan does better than practically anybody in the United States is he swings so elegantly. He has a good foundation, it seems to me, Rusty. He's He's had so little international competition, yet he's so cool. He was the first uh, alternate on the 84 Olympic team. Well, there's the inverted cross. He comes down and holds the cross. So he's had two strength parts already besides the, the, the plans. There's the kip to the L, just a resting position before they press to the handstand. Now really, all he has to do is a, another giant swing up to a handstand as a, maybe a half a tenth, a tenth deduction and then a strong dismount, which will be a half in, half out. A double flip with a full twist. Van Hayden, good landing. Arizona State University. Well, those two scores should play very well. I think as Dan matures a little bit more, that strength part is gonna be even better. Right? As he comes down, you can see it here. He lowers into the inverted, and you can see that his shoulders are not quite level with the rings. As he gets a little bit more mature, that's gonna be a great strength exercise for him. I think the judges give a little break, too, don't you think, on the inverted cross? Well, it's now a D skill, and uh, everyone knows that it's very difficult, but uh, I think as the gymnasts uh, continue to improve, that that's going to have to be level to get the D credit. Well, Rusty, this team could be the dark horse of the competition. Marie and Dan uh, are both outstanding gymnasts on their way up. Still young, still maturing and there's a score for Marie 9.75 the score for Dan Hayden 9.75 also 19.5 for a team that's a great start well, they're hanging in there very good all they have to do is continue to be consistent well here comes one of the teams we've been waiting for the Chinese team of Yu Feng and Li Ning Yu Feng is coming up first and she will elect to vault her first vault is a uh, Laok Sukahara she comes in with a full twist and a short. Oh, Gordy, my. She missed a hand on the horse. That's scary. I, I hate to see a gymnast uh, anytime come close to getting hurt. She seems to be okay. Boy, that's crash and burn time. Well, it really is. You know, I think what caused the whole thing at the very beginning, she has a strong run, but she misses the board. She comes in way too low, and it causes one hand to slip off the front of the horse. Boy, that is really dangerous when that happens. You just don't get any help from the board at all. You know, I think that vaulting is really one of the weakest events in the Chinese women's repertoire. And um, once they solve that, I think that they're going to be real world beaters. You know, I, some, most of the gymnasts that have been to China have said that their boards are, are not real good, so they probably don't work out very hard on it over there. It's probably not fun. Well, she's got a second chance to improve her score, and she's got a heavy burden, you know, with Li Ning as a partner. I'd say that's pressure. Uh, more pressure than, than you're normally going to see, but uh, she'll rise to the occasion. She's a good gymnast, and uh, she's done a full twisting suit for a number of years. Uh, just a matter of getting her, her steps down so she hits the board properly. Now, here she comes. Stretch, block, full twist, and right on top of it, she's off to the side just a little bit, but she'll still score pretty good. Well, thank heavens for a second chance. Let's look at it again, and you can see that she'll... If she hits the board a little bit higher up, she's going to get onto the horse better, and she's going to be able to get up into a better block off the horse. It's just a little loose in the air. It's still a good vault. Well, now the pressure is on this man, Mr. Lee Ning, and what a star he became in Los Angeles in 1984. Summer 84 has got to permeate his memory for the rest of his life. Lee Ning. He is probably one of the most talented gymnasts in the world. Uh, Bela Zerchev from Russia is, is another. Maybe Mitch Gaylord of the United States was another. But he is in his own element on floor exercise. He tumbles higher than practically anyone. There's a double twisting double back somersault. The D move as well as original. He possibly could have lost a tenth, so he would have lost one of the R's from the D move. 
if we see a triple from any gymnast i would guess that this might be one of the first men to to attempt a competition well that's very likely i there has been a few triples attempted no one successfully here's a beautiful flare spin on another d element in his routine watch his hips here as he goes into a plunge press very nice he's a delightful young man an artist a real gifted artist and uh working with a very painful shoulder. There's a sky high Carville side, but uh, probably a little weak for uh, Leaney's talent. There's the balance. And he's getting ready for his dismount, which normally is a double. And just a little short, kicked out a little early. Well, there's Li Ning, the Olympic champion in floor exercise, and what a phenomenal athlete he has already been and will continue to be. Oh, Gordy, I'd love to see that mount again. He does a double twisting, double somersault. You can see that he stands up so fast with his arms over his head, gets into the full twist, and continues on and around. Normally, he's a little more open in that, but a little off on the landing. But that's a great, great maneuver. Oh, what a difficult skill. Leaning and popular here just as he was in Los Angeles. Well, now we find out what the scores are. Of course, the pressure is on Yu Feng, the young woman. Yu Feng gets a 9.3. Li Ning gets a 9.6. Their total, 18.90. Well, the scores at this point in the competition, Roethlisberger Hayden from the U.S., 19.5 in the lead. Second, Retton and Daggett, also from the U.S. And Feng and Ming are down in third place at this stage. We'll be back for more of first-round competition right after this. Well, I'm here with Li Ning and Nguyen Xu Fen, his interpreter. And, of course, uh, Li... You're known to every American because of your magnificent performances during the 1984 Olympic Games, but we're curious. We've, we've noticed a real problem with your shoulder. I've been watching you uh, train. Uh, I understand it's not a new injury. Could you tell us something about this thing? This my head injury is just comes from the long time period of training. Is it a tendonitis? Is it something? Is it going to heal in the in the near future? Is it something that will plague him? 他这个你这个肩肩伤会不会在不久的将来会治好呢？还是嗯会很长时间会这个使你感到很难受？嗯，恐怕要一下子治好，恐怕有点困难。Well, I think it's quite difficult to heal it. Well, uh, very soon, maybe it takes some time. While training probably aggravates it even more. I noticed that that Lee is having acupressure prior to all of his training sessions. Is the acupressure giving him at least temporary relief? 那这个我经常看到这里，每次赛前能够做一些这个按摩放松性的去放松性的这个按摩，他说这个这样对你是不是这个训练还是有有好处？嗯，有点好处。嗯哼，有点疲劳，就是练的时间比较长，疲劳这
Leaning of China. We'll be back with more mixed pairs after the. Of real dark horses in the lead, as you can see, Marie Roethlisberger, Dan Hayden, now are at the top of the competition. Rusty. Well, they're closely followed by um, Mary Lou Retton and and uh, Tim Daggett, but you can never count out uh, Yu Fong and Li Ning. Well, here's our first look at the Canadian team. Christina McDonald, 15 years old. Yeah, good strong run and a layout stretch. Sukahar, 9.9 ball. That's the maximum score you're alluding to, Rusty. Well, that that's, what, that's what they have the scores listed as D vaults, and uh, her, her maximum score that she could receive would be 9.9, .9, um, unless she did it absolutely perfect to get a uh, bonus point back. We could guess that this is going to be well under 9.9. Nine. I would think so. She landed uh, pretty much with her, her legs apart, and she was loose on her pre flight. Interestingly enough, the men vault only once, the women vault twice, and with almost without exception, it seems to me the better vault always comes on the second vault. I wonder what would happen if the women were required to vault only one time, if it would I clean think up that their would, act. Oh, I think it would improve uh, their vaulting. I think that they would probably do uh, uh, the vault that they could do the best. Uh, you know, they only get one shot, so it'd have to be good. Christina McDonald now from Canada, 15 years old, 5 foot 1, 102 pounds from Oshawa, Ontario. Well, again, we need to look at a very strong run. She needs to hit the board uh, as high up on top of the board as possible. They'll look at the pre-flight with the legs and then the block and after flight. That was a little better ball. Well, now we'll get a chance to look at her partner. He'll be coming up in, in just a moment. You'll recall the scores will not be flashed until both have performed. But Christina's second ball in slow motion. You can see her legs are loose and a little bit uh, apart and definitely on the landing. When Anytime the, the feet are apart, there's going to be a, a pretty severe deduction of two to three tenths. Well, here's her partner, Kurt, Curtis Hibbert. 18 years old, 5'5", 149 pounds from Toronto. He just hopped out right to a one arm. It was a very difficult skill. There's a one arm on the other arm, right to a pirouette under the bar and then a pirouette over the top into a flyaway release called a ginger. Had a little form break, but it wasn't bad at all, Gordon. Awfully strong-looking gymnast. He swings very well. He was a, a little off on the kit, but he's getting ready for his dismount, and it's a triple flyaway. Put his hands down. Yeah, he touched down a little bit, and it was such a fabulous routine. How heavily will they hit it, even though it comes out of a move as difficult as a triple? Well, they'll probably go about three-tenths. Uh, his knee possibly touched there, too. So uh, it uh, depends on the, where the judge is sitting and how they look at it. Here's his ginger. Catches a, a little bit uh, away from the bar, but he had a little bit of a form break. And it was a D skill. It came out of the one arm. Well, that's the Canadian team, McDonald and Hibbert, hoping for a high score. Naturally, the combined scores. There's a 9.35 now for McDonald on the vault. Curtis Hibbert scores a 9.15 for a total of 18.5, which pretty well puts them out of the running. Well, here comes our first look at the Italian team. This is Giulia Volpi. She's 15 years old, five foot zero, and she weighs 85 pounds. She's getting ready for her first vault. Be a Cuervo, which is a uh, double front with a half twist, and uh, usually the half twist uh, comes pretty much off the horse into the, uh, lo almost looks like a backflip uh, at the top. Oh, it must be a tough one to land, Rusty. Well, it, it can be. Uh, she lost uh, her awareness for a few seconds in the air, and it's very difficult to land if you don't know where you are, and especially when the ground comes up and hits you and you're not ready for it. Let's look at it again. You can see her pre-flight and her legs are pretty good at first, and then they loosen up, which really makes the, the vault very difficult to stay in control when your body's that loose. Yeah, there's just a whole lot of things going on in the air during that vault. Well, I think that uh, she'll come back and... Uh, at least compensate and not uh, over-rotate it. Uh, anytime that you got a chance to do two vaults, the uh, second one is usually a uh, better chance of being on top of it. Well, she certainly looked unhappy after her first vault as well. She should be. Fortunately, she has a second chance. Now, this is Julia Volpi again from Italy. Here she comes into a run. Then she does another Cuervo. Just a little bit too short. Went the other direction. She just didn't look like she was ready to take the horse. She just didn't look uh, composed in the air before she made contact. Well, you know, it's it's so easy to get lost when you turn so early off the horse 
you have you have no idea where you are and it's very difficult to have any kind of relocation in the air. Well, Julia's landing puts a considerable pressure on this man, her teammate, Boris Preti, 17 years old, 5 foot 6, 132 pounds from Calarte, Italy. Which is a nice back kip to a cross, kip ill. Presses up to a handstand. It's called a hollow back. Want to stay off the straps with your elbows, which he had at least a tenth deduction. It's a, one of the requirements. Swinging to a handstand. Another swing to a handstand. You have to have swing, strength, and hold parts. And he's definitely swung to the handstand enough times. Now here's his giant layout double back somersault to a great landing. Boris Freiti from, from Italy. Not a great routine. Probably uh, the Italian team could be in trouble here. Well, they definitely could be, but uh, as we watch uh, Boris's nice layout double back, and he's right on top of his landing. The rest of the routine just wasn't strong enough to put them in a position where they might command anything, don't you think? Uh, definitely, Gordy. They uh, are good gymnasts, and they're going to be, uh, you know, they're young gymnasts. They're going to be around for a while. Well, there's the score now for Julia Volpe, a 9.05. Her teammate scored a 9.2, total 18.25. Well, here are the standings after the first complete round of competition. In first place, Roethlisberger Hayden, followed by Rhett and Daggett, and Fong and Ning coming in in third place. We'll be back right after this. Chicago, and before the competition, we had a chance to speak with Mr. Mike Jackie, Executive Director of the United States Gymnastics Federation. Well, Mike, you've been Executive Director of the United States Gymnastics Federation through one Olympiad, and your first time out of the box, the men win the gold and the women win the silver. Does that mean that this is what it's going to be in the future? Well, that's going to be a tough act to follow, no question about it. We had a lot of things going for us in Los Angeles, and uh, we have a lot of momentum going for us right now. We hope that we can continue. A lot of new kids are enrolling in clubs. I think of that our juniors are going to be very, very strong. We've got a lot of work to do in the next three years, but we're ready for it. How about Montreal? We've got the uh, World Championships coming up this fall. Will our team be, uh, be ready for that one? It's going to be very interesting because uh, in the Championships of the USA coming up in June, we're going to be selecting a new team. At that event, we will get a chance to see how many of our athletes will then formally retire, and if, in fact, we are going to put a full new team on the floor in Montreal, or if we're going to have some of our stars return from Los Angeles. It's hard to say right now. Everybody's contemplating retirement. At the same time, a lot of them now are starting to think about training again, so we're just going to have to wait and see. Well, Mike, what has this enormous success that the U.S. gymnasts experienced in Los Angeles done to the, to the office that you, that you operate? Well, it's changed drastically, of course. Um, at one time, in fact, when we began in Indianapolis in uh, May of 83, we started with three employees with a change from administration. We now have over 20 employees, and everybody's putting in 14 and 15 hours a day just to keep up. The activity is incredible because of just the new enthusiasm. Lots of kids now that are entering gymnastics clubs. More demand on us for providing information and educational materials and resource materials. All kinds of information continually being sent out. We're doing our very best to keep up with it. It's uh, more than a full-time job, but we love it. One more question. Uh, in the past, it's been maybe 100 to 1 girls over boys in gymnastics. Has that number changed? It is changing, and it's changing for a number of reasons. I think, first of all, of course, now a lot of the younger boys in the United States, they have some stars to look to. They've got some heroes. They also can look at people like Bart Connor and Peter and Mitch and all the kids that have made the Olympic team, won gold medals, and they can say, they did that, and I can do that too. So we're getting a, a great increase in the number of junior boys. Also, our junior boys program is much more sophisticated than it was a number of years ago. Much better kids. Coaches doing a great job of training them. We've got more events and competitions for them, so we're looking for great success from our juniors. Mike, just keep cooking. We'll do our best. We'll be back right after this for more Mixed Pairs competition. You're looking at one of the U.S. Olympic team gold medalists, Tim Daggett. Earlier, I spoke with Tim. Well, Tim, you won the American Cup. Surprise? 
Well, not, not surprised. I'm pleased. You know, after the Olympic Games, coming back and having to prove something, I had to prove something to myself and I think the American public. And yeah, I'm real pleased. You have, all your life, I think, been in a very structured program. You have been going to UCLA, and you've had to meet the needs of uh, a collegiate schedule where your goals were weekly or monthly. Or Now you're an independent. Uh, does this affect your, your training, your motivation? Well, it, it affects my training. It doesn't really affect my motivation. I, I still have dreams. I still have desires. I still have goals. Uh, my training system and, and every day getting into the gym, it's a little bit changed since the games. But, but I, still, I still have things that I want to accomplish. If I didn't, uh, I wouldn't be doing the sport anymore. What are your dreams? Oh, gosh, I just, I don't know. I've been doing the sport for so long now that I think I, I get a, a different type of a feeling. It, it's hard to describe. I just want to be the best gymnast that I can be, and, and I don't think I'm there yet, and I know I can, I can get better. Are you willing to wait to 1988 to see if you can prove that? Well, if it takes that long, yeah, then, you know, then I'll keep going, if I still want to at that point. It's hard to say. That, that's a long road. You know, 88 is, is a long way down the line, but if that's still you know, where it's at for me, then, then you'll see me there. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. All right. Tim Daggett, one of the great American Olympians. And we'll be back right after this. Show back at Rosemont Horizon in Rosemont, Illinois. After the conclusion of the first round of competition, here are your leaders, Roethlisberger Hayden in first place, followed by Retton Daggett and Thong and Ning. Now we're going to take a look for the first time at the Hungarian team. This is Christina Batalfi. Two minutes with a whip over through to a double back in a pike position. Very strong, Landy. Needs to show high amplitude in her acrobatic movements as well as in the tumbling. You can see her doing some pirouettes on the hands. Having a little trouble with her pirouettes there. The first one, and she finally got a hold of it. I think the hard part is being able to blend the music and the acrobatic stunts together and make it into one harmonious type of a routine. A good double flow, just a little bit out of control on the landing. Now, Christina is the all-around champion of her country, so she's the best that the Hungarians have at this moment. There's two nice aerial cartwheels. Started work on a twist uh, up on the ball of her foot. And just got in a little bit of a problem. And she's getting ready for a dismount. Boy, they really flirt with the sideline, don't they? Right at the edge. And a double back. Good tumbler. She just uh, had not put the whole routine together. That's Christina Bartalfi from Hungary. 1984 Hungarian national all-around champion. Now her teammate, Gino Paprika. And he is, I'm told, a hot gymnast. Is that true? Well, he's a very good gymnast, and I think that we'll have an opportunity to uh, also uh, see him in floor exercise. He tumbles very well, and uh, it just depends on whether he has all the elements that uh, they're looking for in the uh, new competition. Well, the rules have changed considerably. Now, remember, the, the base score, the maximum score any gymnast, male gymnast, can get is a 9.4 unless he does something extra to get rewarded points. So 9.4 is max unless unless something special happens, and Rusty can kind of get into that as he goes. Well, that's definitely true. You, you are allowed to have bonus points. The score starts at 9-4, and if you have uh, originality and virtuosity, your score could start at 9-8 without even having any D moves. You saw that his full end was a little bit short, and he did some nice circle in a flare position. Remember, this is the Hungarian team. You've seen Christina Bertolfi. This is Gino Paprika. As a double back in uh, almost a side position. It was whether he uh, was trying to do a double side or a, a loose double back. I think he was attempting a double side. It just was not uh, completely uh, where it was sideways. Good flexibility. Turn around. There's your balance on the one, one leg. And he's getting ready for a dismount. Stand up, double back. Yeah. This was not on top of his tumbling today. 
No, the Hungarian team made it to the second round, but I don't think we're going to be seeing them in the third round. I don't think those were strong enough performances. Go ahead, Rusty. Uh, no, sir. I, as you can see that we were watching his flare. He does it pretty well. He does a nice turn on it. She'll get a uh, D requirement. But both of the, the uh, performers were 9-2, uh, 9-0 performers. Not, not real good routines. Well, thank heavens for them. They said in the beginning that this was a fun competition, not the end of the world. And it certainly has been that way. Now we're waiting for the women to come up with the scores for Christina Bartolfi. There's Paprika also waiting for his score. There are the scores now. Bar Bartolfi gets a 9.25, Paprika 9.0, 18.25 in that round, and the total is only 37.0. Not a strong total. Now we're coming up with the second Japanese team. This is Miho Shinoda. A nice front flip onto the beam. Boy, fabulous, marvelous. She moves across the beam. Looks like she's in complete control. They have turns and hops and jumps and leaps and all combined with the uh, acrobatic elements as well as gymnastics elements. Now Shinoda is only 12 years old. Let's keep that in perspective as we think about all our own kids at home. So there's a flip flop to a layout back flip and is off the center. She couldn't stay on the beam. She has to get back on. Since it is time from a minute 10 to a minute 30, she has to get back up very quickly. Now that flip-flop uh, off of the beam will cost her a half a point. That's well, amazing, too. She comes right back and does a, a very hard uh, two-footed punch front, front flip. I, I think any time that you fall off, you've got to re regain your composure, and she uh, has definitely done that, Gordy. She comes with a, another tumbling sequence. Flip-flop, flip-flop. A little loose in the body, but still uh, pretty much on top of what she's doing. Not bad for 12 years old, if you keep that in mind, huh? That really is. Uh, I can't imagine uh, just walking up and down, it, let alone doing just what they do in floor exercise and tumble. Here she comes for a dismount, and it's a double back somersault. Good landing. Miho Shinoda from Japan. There's Sukahara, her coach saying, eh, that's okay, not great, we'll work on it. All right, now we've got to see what her teammate, Koji Sotomura, will come up with in vaulting. He's a really experienced gymnast. Uh, the Japanese team for, for actually decades were legendary in their ability to vault. They've fallen off a bit in the last uh, three or four years and aren't nearly as strong as they once were. Well, they're coming back. They're going to be a very strong contender in the World Championships, and that was a great pike double front, half twist out. He just was uh, not ready for the landing. Yeah, terrific, right up until the landing, and then it was uh, like jail time. Oh, he just got a little bit over-rotated. He's got to kick out a little bit earlier. Reaches up, a little loose on the pre-flight, nice and tight in the air, comes down into the landing, sunk down a little bit too low, and got his uh, hips behind his feet too far. Now, Rusty, he can see that landing. It seems like he ought to be able to set it in tighter well, than that. Well, a brandy, uh, anytime you brandy you're over the top, you're able to see the ground. And it makes it a little easier for a landing. And the international panel of judges now working on the scores. Will be coming up momentarily. And there's the score for Sotomura, 9.3. Shinoda gets an 8.95. Now, their total in this event, 18.25. And after two events, 37.3. And we'll be right back. McDonald's International Mixed Paris Championship. And here is our first round leader, Marie Roethlisberger. Competing now on the floor, and it's interesting, Rusty. Uh, Marie has a, a serious defect in her hearing in one ear and is legally deaf, wearing a hearing aid now, but you'll notice the difference in the level of the music, and this is the reason why. She's made a tremendous compensation. It starts out very, very loud. It's, she's able to pick it up. She moves over into it, 
the corner after she does a few dance steps. She's right on top of the uh, corner, getting ready to make a, a run into a roundoff back handspring to a triple twist. Very nice, completed all the way around. I think that's one of the most difficult moves in, in, in tumbling. Well, it's underrated. It's uh, very difficult to, to flip up in the air and spin three times. And she, she completed it two and three quarters all the way around. It's, it was good. Boy, they do fight it right to the corner, don't they? They scare she me comes every back time they get there. second pass, and it's a double back. And she's right on top of her landing. Maria's gained the reputation of being a real tough competitor. And for good reason, too. She's overcome so many obstacles. Well, she was hurt at the Olympic trials, and she's had uh, elbow problems, and she just keeps coming back. I think it's, she probably takes it after her dad, uh, Fred Roethlisberger, the coach at Minnesota. He uh, is also the head of our men's program committee and was a former Olympian, and he was just a great competitor all the way around, and I think she takes it from him. spring up into the corner and comes back with a final pass, a double twist. And Tumlin is very strong today. Marie Roethlisberger, second generation gymnast uh, to make the Olympic team for the United States. And of course now we've got to worry about her teammate score, Dan Hayden. Well, we see Marie coming in with her second pass, a round off back handspring double back. She stands up very fast and she's a little loose. It could have been piked even. A very good double back. Well, her daddy ought to be proud of her. Second generation Olympian. And here's Dan Hayden, her teammate, coming up on parallel bars, which is a, a very strong event for Dan. And there you see the Czechoslovakian contingency. Apparently, they have discovered double bubble or whatever it is. Well, they're having a good time, and that's what the meet's all about, is you see Dan Hayden do a beautiful straight arm peach. Nice giant front up rise to a reverse pirouette. There's a V, so in good strength. There's a C press, excuse me, a D press, which is a new requirement. Here's a giant, and another giant. Comes back with a back over bar. Back over bar, he got behind a little bit. and covers back up nice, front up rise, swinging pirouette. Double back, and oh, rotates it, Gordy. Boy, he just pulled it in a little too tight, it looked like, didn't it? Oh, it'll definitely cost him five or six tenths uh, just on the landing. Now, that's the leading team coming into this second round, Roethlisberger and, and Hayden, so this has got to hurt them. Well, it definitely does, because uh, Dan is such a good performer and very solid in everything he does. It, let's look at the mount again. He does a straight arm peach and to a media giant front uprise. Swinging reverse pirouette. He has good extension. He's on top of each skill. Well, now the scores for the American team. Roethlisberger and Hayden. Roethlisberger scores a 9.65 in floor exercise. Dan gets a 9.05, which knocks them out of the lead. Their total now, 38.20. And here comes the Chinese team, Yu Huang. She's a good performer on this event. It's a nice tipping up to a handstand. Giant, reverse heck, to Chakif, half turn back to the low bar, goes around the low bar, which is one of the requirements, as well as the high bar, goes above the high bar into a stalder. There's a giant, and sets up into a common each type dismount. Very oh, good exercise. What a pretty exercise. The Chinese women have won world championships in this event. They're really good. You can see her stalled her right to a handstand. You see the girls bend their elbows a little bit. As they get better and better, they won't be bending the uh, elbows, and there'll be a deduction if they do, just like on the men's side. It's a good dismount, just a little bit off on the landing. Excellent exercise. Well, you probably remember who her teammate is. He's going to be coming up vaulting now, and there he is, Li Ning. Well, Li Ning is going to do a full twisting Sukahara. He needs to lay out his entire body, keep his legs together, and stay straight. Directs to the horse very fast. Good ball. Oh, yeah. Great ball. 
Good tight form in the air. But I think that's uh, something that they really look at. After, on, once you make the block off the horse, you have the execution errors, and uh, you see his feet are just a little bit loose, but no deduction. And then very nice in the air to the landing, a slight hop. D vault, 9.6. Well, it can't hurt the chances of the Chinese team, the A team from China, Yu Feng and, and Li Ning. Curious now to see what their scores are going to be. Remember now, the leaders had a problem. There's a 9.7 for Yu Feng. That's Yu Feng's score. Li Ning comes up with a 9.6, their total for this event. 19.3 gives them a total of 38.2. And we'll be back for more from Rosemont Horizon after this. I just said, uh, Nadia was again uh, a strong person, but basically it's not a big difference as approach, as preparation, as seriousness. I'm doing the same job and I'm asking them to follow my advices on the same way. Uh, I'm demanding and pretty tough during the, the preparation as season. I am very supportive and strongly standing behind the, my kids and my athletes during the competition. I believe, you know, that's the job what I should do and that's what I've been done, you know, for so many years. Uh, between Nadia and Mary Lou, there is hard to find the really, uh, you know, something you know, to line up, you know, that's our common or that is totally different because there are just different personalities, two different athletes with different uh, reactions, different competitional style. Uh, Mary Lou is open like an open book right. all the time, having, having uh, exposed and, and show her emotions, her, what she's feeling. Nadia was like a close, tight person, strong athlete though strong will going aggressively in the competition maybe that's the only only common uh, thing what i could list strong competitors both of them going like all dozers going and and winning and that's that's great to see but otherwise it's it's really hard you know to really really line up some very very common similarities or very big differences well bella congratulations on your tremendous triumphs here and may i wish you tons of good luck in the future thank you my pleasure thank you well, here are the standings uh, during the middle of round two. Roethlisberger Hayden now tied with Fung and Ning at 38.2, followed by Syllabus and Barbieri with 38.1. We're going away from the McDonald's International Mixed Pairs Competition at Rosemont Horizon, Rosemont, Illinois, and uneven parallel bars by perhaps the youngest American folk hero ever, Mary Lou Retton. Looks like Bella's got everything under control. Putting the board in underneath the bars, and Mary Lou's about ready to start her uneven routine. Boy, Bella's energy level is really awesome, you know? You know, he he pumps Mary Lou. I think that the, even at the Olympic Games, he was there on the sides, and you could just see that he gave her that extra energy. Here's Mary Lou's half turn under the bar, and a kip. Reverse heck. Kip up to a handstand. Giant swing. And body wrap, immediate ratten, and over rotates, no deduction. She just covered up so good. I guess that's the, the mark of the true champion. When they make a little error, they just keep right on going. And of course, the judges don't know their routine, so they have to judge what they see. Mary Lou Retton coming off with a very good routine. Not her greatest, but nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, I think that she did a very nice dismount. She's a little bit short on it. You see her body wrap. And to her front flip to the high bar, which is called a retin. She goes over a little bit too far and just covers up just without even making it look like she messed up. Boy, she's such a good athlete. Just phenomenal. Here's her teammate, of course, Tim Daggett, getting the parallel bars all ready. They spray them with a little water and then dust carbonate of magnesium or gym chalk, if you want to call it that, all over. They'd like to get those bars tacky so that they don't slide around when they get up to work. That's true. As a matter of fact, they put a little sugar in the water to actually make the bars stick a little bit more. Here's Timmy's Stalder mount over the top. Stalder's right back up to a handstand. Parowet's in. Here's a nice giant to a straddle cut. Back up right, straddle cut L. Take a little rest. Presses up to a handstand. Backhand, backhand. Tim's a very consistent gymnast. One thing that he's worked on considerably is the stick at the end of the 
this minute. Just Good. like that. Good. He must have worked on it. That's beautiful. And you know, Rusty both Tim Baggett and Mary Lou Retton really look like they enjoy their competition. And their scores, there it is, a 9.4 for Mary Lou, a 9.75 for Timmy Daggett. Now, in this event, they score 19.15 for a total of 38.6. Here's Huang Huang from China. Stands right on the board, jumps up to the high bar, kip. Nice kip right to a handstand. Pirouette, Stalder, reverse heck. It's a half turn. Drops to the low bar, forward hip circle, straddle, immediate pirouette. Goes up to the high bar, cast free hip, stalled her, and feet on front with a half twist and just nails it. That was a good, good routine. Boy, outstanding. I'm glad to have it over with, I think. You can see her very nice staller, just a slight flex of the elbows. It's Gets ready for a dismount. Nice front, a half out, and right on top of the landing. Just needs to slide the heels together a little bit to, for no deduction. Well, now let's see how her teammate, Yang Yue Shun, does on pommel horse. Not an easy event to select as the, as the last event when you're in the hunt. Well, Gordy, this is one of the up-and-comers in China. He's ranked fifth in the uh, uh, China National Championships, and he can really work this event. Oh, he can. Look at the hip extension. That's absolutely gorgeous. He does some nice Magyar travels to the spindle down to the end and goes all the way back across the horse, staying up the entire time. Doesn't make a big deal out of the flare. Does some good scissors. You only have to have two scissors in a row now under the new rules. And he does three, does the two forward and one reverse. And he does the flare, and he does a Stockley right to the end. Beautiful routine. Oh, that's just outstanding. Outstanding. Well, now, things are really beginning to heat up in this competition. The leaders are in trouble. Well, this team is coming on strongly. Go ahead, Rusty. Well, this is, uh, you can see that he does the Magyar travel up to the pommel and just starts spindling on the pommel, which is very, very difficult. Two fine performances by the Chinese team, Quan and Yoishan. Uneven bar the score. 9.75. Yue Shan on the horse, 9.7. Now the total there is 19.45 for a grand total of 38.15 through two rounds. Well, things are heating up to the point where no one can afford to make a mistake at this stage. We're going away now for a few commercial words. We'll be back with more McDonald's Mixed Pairs competition in just a moment. McDonald's International Mixed Pairs Competition. This is Camelia Vinoy from Romania. Starts with a glide kip to immediate free hip hop and then pops right up to the high bar. The kip, cast with a half turn to, through a handstand. Free hip, re grasp to the high bar. Giant, and double flyaway. Yeah. A little one over there watching her. Boy, the Romanian women's team just seems to be endless, doesn't it? It does. You can see her cast up. Does a free hip here, and you can see that she's still too loose in the body and with big arch and bent arms. Definitely caused a little bit of a problem towards her giant. You can see her dismount, double flyaway. Looking at the ground, she knew where she was. Well, now, since the Romanians did not bring any men into the competition, uh, Boine's partner is this man, Stoicho Gotchev from Bulgaria. Well, he's ready to vault. I believe his vault is a uh, Cuervo, which is a double front with a half twist. See here? Yes, it definitely is, and he's short. Not enough rotation. He's got to get off the board fast enough. And seems to be a little bit lost. Yeah, where, where's the floor? I know it's here somewhere. You can see that uh, he comes on very loose. It's off the horse, and then you, you lose sight of where you are, and you're looking so hard, you forget to pull the rest of your body over the top of your shoulders. Well, this team of Boyne and Gochev uh, have made it into the second round of competition, but their score, Boyne gets a 9.3 on the unevens, an 8.65 in balling for Gochev, so that pretty well takes care of them. Their total at this point is only 36.90.
Here is a really interesting performer, Iveta Polokova from Czechoslovakia. She gets a lot of unique uh, skills on the on the beam. She flips around. There's a nice uh, uh, cartwheel side uh, flipping aerial, which is very difficult. Standing back flip, tense, just lost a little bit of balance. At some point, Rusty, I hope we get a look at her coach. Her coach is Vera Cheslavska, who is the great Olympic all-around champion from the 68 games in Mexico City. She's, she's too loose coming over the top right there, Gordon, and the reason she lost her balance. Well, there's an illusion, which is uh, difficult to do on the beam. And here's a, an, another uh, different trick that you don't see too often. It's a running front and with a half twist. It's a blind landing, very difficult to land. Coordinated her dance and her acrobatic and uh, gymnastic elements pretty good. She definitely has some, some originality. But three flip-flops in a row is very difficult, especially having uh, the little air on the back layout earlier. There's the leaps. And she should be getting ready for a dismount. Round off double twist. Good landing. Iveta Polokova, the Czechoslovakia. And there's her coach, Vera Czeslavska, the grand old dame of women's gymnastics. She started it all. She was a great gymnast. Uh, let's look at uh, her back handspring, back layout, and why she lost it. it. Comes over the top, she's loose legged all the way, and she loses the side of the beam. Her head turned off to the one side and lost the shoulders, uh, keeping her square. Well, now it's kind of up to her teammate. He's from Japan, Haroyashi Taguchi. Well, the Japanese have always been innovators on the uh, parallel bars, and uh, Higuchi is just an excellent gymnast. It's ready for his mount. Peach to immediate straddle cut. Without touching back on that is a D element. Stitch. A little problem. Tenth of the deduction. There's a nice Healy to immediate back stitch. The element is a skill, uh, Gordon, that uh, they've added where the gymnast has to show uh, the more superior difficulty to get the courage that they need in their routine. You're talking about more hazard? <laughs> well, it's, it's scary, I, I tell you. They have to have a lot more difficulty. He's getting ready for his dismount here. A double somersault. Oh, uh, too bad. Of control. Now that was a pretty good routine up until the dismount. Well, we had a couple minor errors, and if he would have stuck to dismount, it would have been a 9-5, 9-6 routine. Well, I think the team of Polokova and Taguchi is probably in serious trouble at this point. Well, let's look at this one-arm uh, handstand. Normally, uh, you try to lock your elbow out, and he's fighting it considerably. It's not a deduction, but he could have been a, a little steadier in the position by keeping the arm straight. There's the backflip, and a nice stutz handstand. Well, now we're getting ready for the scores. There they are. Polokova gets an 8.9 on beam and 9.15 on the parallel bars for Taguchi. That gives them an 18.05 for that round and a total of 36.65. At the end of round two, Retton and Daggett in the lead and a two-way tie for second with Roethlisberger Hayden and Fong and Ning from China. We'll be back right after this. We talked to her just before the competition began. Well, Mary Lou, since you've been away from the Olympic Games, which ended in August, that's about seven months ago, eight months ago, uh, you've been away from the gym a lot. Have you missed it? Um, right after the Olympics, yes, I was uh, sidetracked from the gym, doing different things, come here, and we want you to speak here. But recently, I've gotten back in the gym. Well, the gym is my second home. I always feel comfortable there, and it was great to get back in training. Um, has it been difficult for you to get back in shape? At first it was, yes, because we've done a lot of exhibition tours, you know, very watered down routines and waving and smiling, and, uh, and the crowd loves it. But getting back into competition and competing for them, international co judges, was a big, big change. Well, you know, a lot of people out there now think, well, Mary Lou has, has achieved all that she could possibly achieve. She's the world champion, the Olympic champion. Uh, do you feel that your... Uh, your needs, competitive needs, have been satisfied by the uh, Los Angeles Olympic Games? I, I have to admit the Olympics was the ultimate. That was the ultimate dream and the ultimate goal for myself. But 
then again, I just wanted to prove to myself that I could do it again, you know. It really didn't matter if, if I won the American Cup, just to prove to myself that I could hit four solid routines. Are you looking at 1988 then? That's really a long way away. Three and a half years is a long way away, but being a two-time Olympian is always another goal, anyone's mind. All right, here comes the hard question. Do people recognize you in your little red car? <laughs> they do. They really do. I'm going to cause a wreck one of these days. They're looking at me and not the road. <laughs> You're a terrific ambassador. Good luck to you. <laughs> Thank you. Put her in a red sports car, and I defy you not to recognize her. Well, here comes Huang Quan in the final round of competition. Remember, only the top five teams now will be competing in this round. Nice step down back handspring right into a tricked it over Corbett made famous a flip flop to a straddle. Aerial walkover. Looked like she was off and pulled it right back on to another aerial walkover. She has good combination between her acrobatic and gymnastic skills. Seems to be in control. Here's a trick you'll really like, Gordy. Flip-flop right to a hip circle on the beam. You're right about that one. I do like that. Side roll. She makes the hip circle look better than I've ever seen it before. Stays right on top of the beam. Good eye contact out in front. And she does work the beam sideways a little bit more than most of the other performers. Split lead. Leap. Good body movements. Getting ready for a dismount. Hair too long before, but a nice, nice double back. I think you're right, Rusty. She rested just a, a tad long at the end there while she was waiting for the for the signal saying that she had completed the minimum time limit. Watch that flip-flop sidewards again. Catches right on her hands and then does a hip circle around the beam. Good support and then does a side roll. Turns to a cross. Swing up. That's Huang Kwan from China. Now her teammate, Yang Yui Shan, will be competing in floor exercise, and just like all the other Chinese competitors, he'll show you some elevation. Oh, he can tumble very good. Gets set for his first tumbling run. A round off back handspring and a full in pike position. Good control, nice landing. Comes back with the second pass. Arabian piked one and three. Roll out. Transition move. Third tumbling pass. Round off backflip, front one and a quarter. Well executed. Boy, solid on that. This is Flair, does a spindle. He's definitely got the two D moves in his routine. The Arabian uh, one and three is not a D move, even though it's stun piked. And you cannot get more than three courage points back when you have two D moves. So he has the two D moves, which he'll have three back, and definitely he'll get two back in virtuosity. In other words, he can't score more than a 10. He can't score more than a 9-9. Nine, nine. And a good double bet. Yang Yuishan. Well, this is really a horse race. I'll tell you, we're down to the top five teams, and uh, it's still at a point where anyone could win it. That's right, Gordy. You know, uh, Yang just continues to push the leaders, and here he does a really nice uh, backflip to a front one and a quarter. Very soft. And here he goes into his flare and makes a half turn all the way around. Good execution. Well, the judges have awarded Huang Kwan 9.75 on the beam and Yang Yuishan a 9.5 on the floor. Now, this gives them a total of 19.25 in that event. 
and an overall total of 57.4. And ladies and gentlemen, those are your new leaders. Now coming up from Romania, Daniela Silivas on the floor. Just an exciting tumbler, Gordy. She, she moves across the mat very fast and she twists and flips. Uh, she gets her dance together. She's going to be a really good performer. Well, she's in a position to move her team up. Whoop, out of bounds. A little over-rotated. Now check this music. A Romanian doing some plain old hoedown dance. Well, you know, they have a rule that they say no show business uh, flair in women's floor exercise. I, I like it when the crowd gets involved. Maybe she's getting ready for another tumbling run, which is a triple twist. I think one of the most difficult moves in gymnastics. It's good. She almost made it all the way around. Let's Remember, she's only got 61 pounds to move. That's got to be a help. Uh, she tumbles extremely well. As I said before, when she puts all her acrobatic and gymnastic elements together, she's going to be just a great performer. Be interesting if this team moves up because it is such a mixed team. Of course, uh, Silivas from Romania and her teammate from uh, from France. She's had a very good day. Huh? She finished it strong here, and she'll score pretty good. Good double back. Daniela Silvis from Romania. Now she stepped out of the area, but I don't think it's going to hurt her score that much. I think she'll still score in the middle nines. Listen to that audience. Over 14,000 people have really gotten swept up. Watch Danielle's triple twist. There's a good low flip-flop, stands up very fast, tight body, head in, nice triple full. A real competitor. I have a suspicion we're going to see her on the international scene a great deal. Here's Laurent Barbieri, her teammate from France. Well, now, this team has a chance to really move up, Rusty. I certainly do, and you know, Loren has had a very good day. He scored a 9.45 in vaulting and a 9.5 in floor already, and a rings is a good event for him. It sounds like 9.45 is a real low score after all of the 10s and 9.95s we've been having for the last three or four years, but got to remind the audience that the scoring system has changed and the scores are going to be considerably lower. It doesn't mean their performances are bad. Loren does a nice kip. Right to a plunge. Straight arm shoot to a handstand. Lowers down almost to a Maltese for just a little short of the two seconds required. What a beautiful cross position. Goes around to L support. Press to a handstand. He definitely has his three strengths. Swings up to a handstand. Shoot the other direction. And a layout double back. Nice landing. Boy, beautiful landing. Fantastic. Remember now, 57.4 is the team to beat. That was the score posted by the Chinese team. So we'll see what Silabas and Barrieri come up with. Look at Lorenz dismount one more time. Layout, pike double back, and he's right on top of the landing. Very well executed. And Danielle Silvis scores a 9.5. Barbieri gets a 9.45 on rings. This gives him an 18.95 in this event. Gives him a total of 57.1, which puts them in second place at this moment. And we'll be back after this for more International Mixed Pairs. In Rosemont, Illinois. Now the next three pairs are the final three pairs we're going to see, and they're the three that we're leading coming into this third and final rotation. This is Yu Feng from China. Great double back from laid out position, Gordy. It's going to be tight from here on in. 
Comes back with a front step out through to a double back. Minor air. She's going to score very good. Well, she'll have to score better than the Chinese normally do in floor exercise, Rusty. I think they're good tumblers, but their dance and music has been a real problem in the past. I think something that they're working very hard on. Well, obviously, <laughs> Yu Fang has because she seems to be putting uh, a lot of rhythm and uh, harmony into her exercise. She has good coordination between her acrobatic and gymnastic elements. She's getting ready for another tumbling run. Well, anything, that was probably the weakest part of her exercise where she backed up into the corner. Good double back. She'll get a good score, Gordy. Well, Yu Kong has done all she can do. That's the end of the competition for Yu Fung. Now it's up to the judges. And her teammate, the man, Li Ning, three gold medals in the Summer Olympic Games in Los Angeles, one of them in the event he'll now perform in, Amal Horse. Well, it's a good event for Li Ning. And one that he, I think he in, would enjoy finishing up on because he's very consistent and he definitely has all the, all the tricks it'll take to score good. What beautiful straight body extension. Gee, love to watch this man work. Well, he's going all out with the uh, straight body of uh, Mangyar travels across the horse. Here's a nice, almost to a handstand. Very, very well executed. Scissor moves. And it, he does this like Daggett. He does the flare at the end of the routine. And uh, the judges are going to have to address this. It'll be interesting what he scores. Beautiful. Well, he sure finishes with a rocket, I'll tell you that. And he loves it. <laughs> oh, my. They get such a warm welcome when they come to this country. It's just marvelous to see them here competing. They were definitely great performers and, and fun to watch. You see Li Ning's beautiful flair has probably the best extension up through a planche position of, of anyone on Pommel Horse. Goes down to the end, continuing his flair, goes around the end, to a loop and then goes right to a handstand. And here come the scores. Yu Fung gets a 9.8 on the floor. Li Ning on Pommel Horse gets 9.85. Total 19.65 for those events. This gives them a running score of 57.85. That, ladies and gentlemen, puts them in the lead. Now the American team of Marie Rothlisberger and Dan Hayden. They have been very consistent up to this point. I think Marie's had an excellent meet. She starts with a very nice plan. She presses up to a handstand. Doesn't quite reach the handstand. Not a, not a major deduction. It's a turn. Head spring, step out. Bobble. Tenth at the most. Split leap. I was a little surprised that she picked this event. Uh, just goes to show that all of her events are very good. Well, you can take it to the bank. If I was a woman competing in this event, I wouldn't pick the beam. She's staying right on top. A good full twist on the ball of the foot. Flip-flop half turn. Very difficult because you can't see the beam as you make the turn. It's covering the entire beam, both ends. Goes a sequence. Flip flop, to straddle down to a half turn scissor, roll back, side turn. Good combination. Those Olympic leotards have almost become a trademark, you know that? Oh, they're beautiful. She's getting ready for a dismount. Round off, double back somersault. Marie Rothless for the We look at her flip-flop, straddle down, swings back, does a scissor half turn, then rolls sideways, and then a full turn all the way over. 
Not an easy move, I might add. No, anytime you're rolling around on a beam, it's very difficult. Good flow. Well, again, Marie Roethlisberger has done all she can do. She's performed three good, solid routines. Now it's up to her partner, Dan Hayden. Well, pressure is really on here for Danny, and he's got uh, an event that he does very well. He's uh, considered to be uh, one of the best performers on high bar in, in the United States. And uh, it's going to be a good pressure situation for him. Boy, talk about an innovator. He is really innovative in this event. If he, if he hits all his moves, it'll, uh, it'll knock your socks off. Well, he has one of the most difficult tricks you can do on high bar at the beginning here. He has a stalder. And he beats, and he does a one-and-a-half flip over the bar. Oh, my! I oh, guess <laughs> if you're going to miss that trick, uh, I guess it's good to miss it while you're standing on your feet. But that's called a Kovacs, and it's very, very difficult, and there's not too many people in the world that can even do it. He has 30 seconds to get back up. Interesting thing, that he has to have another release in his routine. If he doesn't, then the score is going to be much lower. Well, I think the team is hurting right now because falling off the bar in and of itself is an arbitrary five-tenths of a point deduction. So... When you're in a race this tight, that puts you in deep yogurt. Here we go. It's back up on the bar. You were allowed to get back to where you came off. It's a nice stalder, half turn. And does the stoop in. That's a, one of the requirements where he had his back is to the bar. And no, he does not have a uh, release of B value or more. So his routine is going to be short. Nice half in, half out over the top of the bar. Bad luck for Dan Hayden. I'll tell you, he is going to be a, a most exciting gymnast as he matures. Well, he's going to have a lot of competitions in the future. And there's just no telling how good he can really be. But look at his dismount one more time. Is the stalder, immediate pirouette, immediate stalder. And then he sets up with a beat. You can see it a, a little jerky. But it takes that to take it up as high as he is. Look how high he is above the bar, Gordy. Oh, he really works that bar. That's quite a jar when you land. Well, the scores for Roethlisberger, 9.65 on the beam. Dan Hayden gets an 8.6 on the horizontal bar. Gives them an 18.25, a total of 56.45, which puts them out of the running. Unfortunate. Well... We'll take a short commercial break. When we come back, Mary Lou and Tim Daggett. Let's see if they can do it. Final rotation of the McDonald International Mixed Pairs Championship. This is Mary Lou Renton. Let's see if she can put it together. Full twist, round off, up, up. Oh! Oh, my. She was up in the rafters, Gordy, and she just overworked it. Looked like she was all charged up, didn't it? Oh, she, she is definitely charged up. She's tumbling great. I guess that's silly. She's never been uncharged. Here's her second run. Two flip-flops. Double back right to the corner, steps out. Boy, and it's an arbitrary tenth of a point deduction when you step out. That's two times for Mary Lewis. It's, it's something I've never seen before. Well, it could definitely cost them the mixed pairs championship. You know what? The 14,000 people could care less that she stepped out of bounds three times. <laughs> That's true. She's such a great tumbler. Boy, has she brought them gymnastics back home to America. There's no question about it. She's disappointed. But just look at the momentum that she, she carries across the mat into her tumbling. She goes down on her flip-flop. A great full end. Look, you can almost see the ceiling. Just had too much gas. But what intensity this woman has. I love the way she works. All right, here comes her partner, Timmy Daggett. He's going to work his best event, I think, 
the horizontal bar. What? An event that is uh, most consistent for, for Tim, and he's had a really great day, and I, I think that he's proven himself uh, in the last couple weeks in the competitions that he's been in. He seems to be really on. Here's a, here's a good combination, uh, D elements together. Re reverse hack to immediate flyaway half twist. This is a, another requirement. The uh, dorsal are back to the bar. He hops out, getting ready for his dismount. There's a layout double, full twist. Right to a good landing. That's Timmy Daggett, the man who clinched the gold medal for the American team in the Olympic Games last summer with his high bar performance. Wow, what a competitor. Uh, he's hot, Gordy, and uh, he's going to be uh, uh, somebody to reckon with in the World Championships. Beautiful to talk F over the bar, right to a Ginger half twist. He's right on in this whole, whole set. Beautiful Stalder, hop. He's a three-quarter giant. Stoops in, right to an inverted giant. Hops out. Does a giant setting up for his layout. Double fly away with a full twist. And just as we suspected, that's an 8.75 for Mary Lou Retton on floor, a 9.7 for Timmy Daggett on high bar. Total for that event, 18.45, which gives them a 57.05, but unfortunately drops them to fourth place. Well, that's the end of the competition in the Mixed Pairs Championship. Back with the standings in just a moment. Yu Fong Li Ning are the mixed pairs champions, followed by Quan and Yue Shan. And in third place, Silivas with Barbieri. Retton and Daggett team finished fourth, with Roethlisberger and Hayden finishing in fifth. Going into the competition, Mary Lou Retton and her partner Tim Daggett were decidedly favored by the Chicago crowd. And even though Mary Lou had her problems, she had the audience mesmerized right from the beginning. Let's have a word with Mary Lou and her coach, Bella Caroli. Well, Mary Lou, uh, you're surrounded by all your fans. You didn't win the mixed pairs competition. Apparently, you're human after all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess you could say that. Everybody makes mistakes. This is this is more of a relaxed competition. We had a lot of fun in it because you know you root for your your teammate. Me and Tim really had a good time. But you know, winning the McDonald's American Cup was really what I came here to do. You look like you got injured before the warm-ups in the uh, third rotation. Is that uh, what happened there? I, I was warming up and my hand slipped and I, I just went down right on my stomach. I'm fine. You mean a gymnast who is the world cha or the Olympic champion just fell down? It happens. What can you do? <laughs> Bella, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> Can happen with anybody. Well, it wasn't a big fall or whatever. You know, it was a slipped hand, <laughs> and I thought you know it was a great crowd. We had really, really enjoyed this competition, even though you know the result actually is, a, is an exhibition, and with a lot of fun. The gate spirits, but these Chicago people are fantastic. They're supportive and a great crowd. We really enjoyed that. I think this is and one of the best crowds I've ever. And been in front of, really. Right. Well, I agree. The crowd was so marvelous, but they were marvelous because people like you were also <laughs> tremendous. It was good competition. Yeah. Congratulations to both of you. It was marvelous watching you. Thank you. We'll be back right after this with some final comments. Ning and Ning in first place. Juan Yui Shan in second place, followed by Syllabus and Barbieri from France. In fourth place, Retton and Daggett, and Roethlisberger, Hayden, finish in fifth. That wraps up the 1985 edition of the McDonald's International Mixed Pairs Competition. And as we suspected, the spoils have gone to the team making the least mistakes. Rusty, at the top of the show, you suggested that consistency might be the decider. Well, Li Ning and Yu Fong hit six for six routines and definitely were the most consistent. Timmy Daggett had an outstanding meet. And you know, though Mary Lou missed an event, she certainly has put gymnastics on the map in the United States. The fans love her. So from the Rosemont Horizon and the McDonald's International Mixed Pairs Competition, this is Gordon Maddox along with Rusty Mitchell saying so long for now.